This is amazing. So why did I go to Iceland in search for composition? Well, my tenure in photography is fairly short, I'd say. I do have a music background. I went to school for music. Now, I see a lot of similarities between music and photography when it comes to theory. For instance, for music, there are underlying rules behind how certain progressions, chords, and rhythms sound a certain way, and how those sounds inevitably elicit a certain emotion from the listener to make them feel a certain way. These theoretical guidelines exist to act as building blocks for composition. Now, while you don't necessarily have to abide by them, you do have to know about them in order to communicate specific feelings to your listener. So, why, might you ask, am I in the back seat of a rental car about to uh, <clears throat> to change on some random windy beachhead in Iceland. In this video, we're gonna talk about the consistent pursuit of composition and why I decided to go to Iceland to try to find some composition inspiration. <music> He got blasted by a wall of rain. I'm completely soaked. It's amazing to me that a group of 10 people voluntarily get completely blasted by 45 degrees, high winds, just so much rain, just to go out and take a few photos but it's so nice to, uh, to be a part of a community with kind of one mind. It's like, who cares? We enjoy taking photos and that's what we came here to do. Uh, it's so refreshing to be a part of people who think the same way. Now within photography, I've learned that the approach is actually very similar. Oftentimes when you look at a good photo, you don't necessarily know why it's a good photo, but you know that it feels like a good photo. An unexperienced eye may be able to tell between a good photo and a bad photo if paired side by side, but not necessarily be able to communicate why or what makes the difference. Needless to say, like music, photography abides by underlying rules which dictate the why behind how a photograph can look better than another. Now, among all of the factors that can go into making a photo look good, such as camera quality, lighting, noise, depth of field, focus, and so on, I wanted to talk about the factor of composition, or how your visual elements sit within the frame of your photograph. Now, there are many rules within composition that go beyond just focusing on your subject. And on my trip, and in this video, I only wanted to focus on three of them scale, minimalism, and pattern. Now, let me emphasize that, in my opinion, composition can be one of the most difficult theories within photography to master. But I think it's more of the intentionality and the consistent pursuit of these techniques that will in turn yield better and better results as your experience grows. Now, as I look back over the photos of this trip, I wanted to provide just a few examples where I feel like I communicated these compositional theories of scale, minimalism, and pattern strongly, and also give you a couple examples where I feel like I missed the mark. Welcome to the Highlands. Continuing 
our journey in the Highlands in Lund, Maunalaugar. Been pretty happy with the compositions I found so far. This is the right way? Chocolate. You can have a chocolate. Sulfur. Smells like rotten eggs. We're hiking through a lot of fields up these mountains. We're doing like a, I think a four mile loop. Just taking in the scenery. Got some blue skies today. So, really nice hiking weather. So naturally I did take a lot of photos and I don't want to bore you all in this video and go through <laughs> countless number of photos that I took. Um, I'm going to pick some of, I guess in my opinion, some of my strongest photos as well as some of the ones that I really, really want to be strong, but they just, they, they just aren't as strong. So this first photo was in Lanmanalaugar in the Highlands and it was a super fortunate picture the first night that we were in our mountain cabins. It was very rainy, it was very wet. It was fairly dark by the time we had uh, arrived there, which was a couple hour drive, if I can recall. And we got completely soaked earlier that day doing a day hike down Howie Foss waterfall. We were at the base of the mountains, just at the kind of the bottom of the picture. And I decided to just send up the drone, got quite a bit wet, but right as I kind of breached the peaks, uh, I got this amazing payoff of a view. So this composition, I really wanted to focus on scale. And I think the element that really provides the, the sense of scale in this photo is the highlighted riverbed at the bottom. On top of the fact of just how dramatic it was with the light just along the horizon, as well as the ominous layer of clouds on the top. All right, so this next photo I, I really like, but I feel it's actually one of my weaker compositions. Now I should have asked one of our other colleagues and hikers to, uh, to hike along that dark ridge and just be a silhouette, a tiny silhouette off in the distance against those highlighted pastel mountains. I think having a silhouette of a hiker just on that dark ridge would have really made this photo pop and give it more of a reference point of scale. I think minimalism, I think this kind of hits its mark. I really like the colors. I like the pastels. Greens are, are really, really tough to edit, especially the Icelandic green moss in midday sun. It's really tough to get those colors right.
Now this next photo is a pretty standard composition, those kind of aerial bird's eye view down photographs that you see out of Iceland. Uh, you got a stark white subject like a van against the, uh, the really dark black sand, Icelandic sand. Desaturated the greens, added a punch of orange just to make it a bit more morbid, I guess. You got a little bit of an S pattern in there and I like that how that kind of passes through the frame and adds um, a little bit of context to the subject so as it's not just kind of sitting off to the side of the road. It has a sense of direction. You know where the van is headed and it's headed right up through the frame. Over everything, okay. and then you put, try to put your trousers over everything so it's you know hiking everything. About to go glacier hiking. Everybody's getting ready. John, how do you do that? Yon, our guide, is making sure everybody's <laughs> all cramponed up properly. <laughs> I get that. Okay. The plan is to go up there somewhere and have lunch. All right, this next photo is another example where I feel like I just didn't hit the mark. Now for this one, I was going for scale. Unfortunately, with this photograph, there's not really anything to compare this mass of land to. This was an example where we were uh, near Vik and Yoda Cave is kind of toward the bottom left of that mass of land and this was the highest i'd ever sent my drone agl above ground level it was at like 400 500 meters it was pretty high up so this is a very very high cliff side land mass however i feel like it's missing two things um, i feel like it's missing water just some waves crashing toward the bottom end of that frame i think just that pop of blue with the, the crisp white uh, wave caps would have really added a lot to this photograph. And there's no real sense of subject that you can compare the size of this landmass to. All right, I really enjoy this photo. It did take a lot of editing and finagling, but the idea behind this one was minimalism and scale. Now this was at Dirholai Lighthouse. It's a pretty popular place. It's down near um, Reynesfjara, which is southeastern Iceland, kind of the, the highway stretch, the popular highway stretch between Vik and Reykjavik. So it took quite a bit of editing because there was a lot of people there. However, I left a single individual on the right side of the frame intentionally. I liked the idea of loneliness. You can even see that the character is almost hunched over. It was also very windy that day. So it's almost like he's trudging toward the lighthouse just all alone, but you get this beautiful sunset lighting up the clouds. I like the addition of foreground with the uh, the grass kind of swaying in the front. There were quite a, quite a number of people around the lighthouse, probably three or four 
extra people that I really wanted to edit out. I felt like they added just a lot of distraction to this photograph. And this idea of solitude would not have been conveyed as strongly. So that's why I wanted to edit them out and just leave that one individual. So I really like this photograph. Uh, minimalism and scale was really what I was going for uh, with this one. She's harvesting wild blueberries on this super steep, super steep hill. She said it was uh, these red plants here. good. She said with cream is the best. Wild blueberries and cream. I have a little bit left of the mountain before we summit. All right, almost there. Pretty nice up here. Very quiet. We had our last Highland Mountain stay in uh, the Valley of Thor or Thorsmurk. We were doing an evening kind of golden hour hike up this large mountain, and this was on the way up. This is actually, I think, one of my favorite photographs. It's again very simple, but we hit the timing of this hike really just right with a burst of fall colors, which you can really see uh, the oranges, purples, greens, blues, um, reds, just everything. It's such a, a colorful photograph. And I just wanted to paint just a little bit of the light on that peak off in the distance. And uh, you just get a sense of minimalism and beauty. If you ever have a chance to go to Thorsmark, uh, Valley of Thor, strongly, strongly encourage it. It is a bit off of the beaten path. If you are confident driving through <laughs> a number of riverbeds, then it is definitely worth it. what happens on a trip of photographers. Yeah. 